So, Army of Ghosts, Doomsday. Is that where the term clickbait originated? Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin, I am a geek, you're watching Kevin the Geek. And it is time for another Doctor Who Wednesday for my new Who Doctor Who review of Series 2 finale. The two-parter, Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. Now, a quick reminder, when I do a two-parter story, I do a review for both of them. And so all the scores I do come for both of them combined. I'm not doing them individually. It is a combined review. Thank you so much for everyone who has recently subscribed to the channel. I've recently managed to get to 100 subscribers, something I never thought I would achieve in a million years. So thank you to every single one of you for watching the videos or for subscribing and leaving comments. I thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. But enough jibber jabber, let's get on with the review. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I do believe that this is a bit of a, a tease and not in a good way for the writers of this episode. Because at the start of the episode, for both parts really, when they say, this is the story of how I die, I feel a real letdown for the finale of this episode. And Rose doesn't die. And yeah, in, in a way, I kind of wish she did. I'm not gonna lie. And not because I actively dislike Rose as a character. One thing I do dislike, is the whole love storyline between the Doctor and Rose, or really, more specifically, Ten and Rose. It's something I just absolutely hate. I, I might be in the minority, but I just do not think the Doctor should have a romantic relationship with anybody. And I understand to a certain extent, why they've done it. I mean, they've done it so many times now. They've done it with Rose. They've done it with Martha. They sort of did it to a slight extent with Amy and the 11th Doctor. They really, really hammed hard in it with Yaz and the 13th Doctor, which that one even more so annoys me, which I will get to further down the line. But yeah, just for me, it doesn't work. And yes, they're trying to go, especially with Ten, he's a little bit more human. And so, you know, he might be potentially reciprocating of that. But just no, no. Please, for the love of God, for holy Jesus, Mary and Joseph, please do not put the Doctor and his companion in a romantic love triangle thing anymore <sighs> sorry i got a little bit carried away there but it just bugged me and the whole finale of this story where rose gets trapped on the other side and she's banging down the wall because she loves him she wants to get back to him and she declares her love for him on the beach Ugh, so cheesy I hated it. And I've hated it ever since 2006. So this is a long time coming wanting to give a bit of this rant. But putting that aside, the actual story for this two-parter, I'd say not bad. And I like the idea of putting the Daleks and the Cybermen together. Because Russell T. Davis mentioned in an interview once that as a child, he had had Toy Sideman and Toy Daleks, and always wondered who would win in a fight. And they never fought each other on screen. And so one of the first opportunities he got was he wanted to pit them against one another. And it was brilliant. I will say that, that again, although a little bit cheesy, the whole back and forth dialogue scene between the Sidemen and the Daleks... Daleks be warned. You have declared war upon the Cybermen. This is not war. This is pest control. 
We have five million Cybermen. How many are you? Four? You would destroy the Cybermen with four Daleks. We would destroy the Cybermen with one Dalek. You are superior in only one respect. What is that? You are better at dying. That one is just so good. It is really good, that little bit of dialogue between the pair of them and both of them trying to outrank each other in a way and prove their own dominance. It's pretty much the, the epitome of the alpha males outside of a pub wanting to have a scrap up. Now, Torchwood. If you haven't seen the reviews yet, I have started reviewing the first season of Torchwood. Make sure you check out the playlist. I will put it in the link in the corner. But Torchwood within solely Doctor Who, they had taunted and teased us with it. But I don't think realistically it was as apparent compared to some of the instances with Bad Wolf from season one. Some of those were pretty much in your face, like the graffiti on the TARDIS or the Bad Wolf Corporation, or even in Boomtown, where they literally threw it in your face. Here in this season, you had the werewolf episode, which obviously set up the premise of Torchwood, and then it was just a few little dribs and drabs throughout, so it wasn't really kind of in the forefront of your mind. Tracy Ann Oberman, as Yvonne Hartman, she was great. She was really, really good in what she did, and... I'm still to this day a little bit in two minds with her ending. The whole she gets turned into a Cyberman but also sort of keeps a slight semblance of her humanity and stops the Daleks and then you have the kind of tear coming out of it. I like it and I don't like it at the same time. It's really weird. And here we are, you know, almost 17 years later and... I still don't really know how I feel about that. Now, despite the fact that having the Daleks and the Cybermen back together was brilliant, I have to point it out. And it's something that really annoys me. How, and it's not just solely down to Doctor Who, this is media in general, whether it's TV or movies or video games, the whole point of trailers is to get you excited about whatever the upcoming project is. I get that. The problem is, when you try and set up a big twist, but you reveal it in the trailer, it robs you of that excitement and joy when you're watching the episode. Now, recently, re-watching all of the episodes, kind of in, in the build-up to doing these reviews, I'm seeing those trailers again. And I forgot that in at the end of Fear Her, the trailer for the next episode, which was The Army of Ghosts, there was actually a clip from the Doomsday episode. So the second part, not the first part, the second part of this story. And although you didn't see the Daleks on screen, you saw a woman getting shot and getting lit up and her skeleton exposed, as you always do with the Daleks. And so I knew the Daleks were coming in this episode without even getting to the episode itself. And it's just... Ugh, it, pisses me off so much. You can do good trailers that don't spoil anything. Think about the Avengers Infinity War trailer, that very first one. Phenomenal! Absolutely phenomenal. You knew nothing about it. You had just enough of a sense as to what's coming up without spoiling anything. Now, a movie that came out around the same time was Terminator Genesis. The fifth movie in the Terminator franchise, if I remember correctly. And that had a humongous plot twist in revealed in the trailer that John Connor, the hero of the Terminator world, got turned into a Terminator. That ruined 
watching the movie for me because that would have been an incredible twist watching it in the cinemas but i was robbed of that whilst watching the trailer so if companies could just stop doing that that would make me so much happier if you disagree with that then obviously let me know in the comments down below now your supporting characters for this overall pretty good you know you have the return of Pete Tyler from Pete's World. You have Jake, who's kind of there. He doesn't really do a lot in this one. But you have Mickey kind of coming back. And, again, I just feel he was wasted. Because everything that they did in the build-up of the Cybermen 2 part, uh, you had Mickey wanting to go out and be his own man and stand on his own feet and be a really strong character. And yet here... He just, again, becomes that little side piece to the Doctor and Rose show. And, yeah, I just feel bad for the character of Mickey. Obviously, the whole Jackie and, and Pete thing, I saw that coming a mile off from a few episodes ago. So that didn't really shock me. It was a nice little touch. And, of course, again, they have a nice little dynamic in their little scene together. You look bold. You don't. Standing there. Just got lucky. Lived my life. You were left on your own. You didn't marry again, or. There was never anyone else. 20 years, though. Look at me, I never left that flat. Did nothing with myself. You brought her up. Rose Tyler. That's not bad. And I do really, really like the the banter and the dynamic that the Doctor has with Jackie when she get kind of gets caught in the TARDIS and Torch would mistake her for Rose. And that was a nice little bit of fun to, to that scene. And just managed to add a little bit of humour before, of course, the, the real high stakes kicked in. But as for the Doctor and Rose in this one... I would say they were really, really strong. But for me, what lets them down is that whole final bit. I mean, yes, it is an emotional scene where they get separated. And they could have done that without the clickbait aspect of saying that, oh, this is the day I died. Or, you know, I love you. You know, so... Other than those bits, I thought the dynamic and, and, you know, how they worked together was great. And I really think it kind of brought Rose's arc to a conclusion. Because for the last at least half of a season, three quarters of this season, it's really been apparent that Rose, maybe through admiration, through stupidity, whatever you want to call it, she is basically trying to emulate the Doctor, and really be him, you know, and they've obviously done it with other characters later down the line as well, but this was the first time that they really tried to show it, and it really shows that you cannot compete with the Doctor, and the way he is, he is dangerous, and if you try and emulate him, chances are you're going to lose your life, or you're going to get injured, or something really, really bad is going to happen. Music and dialogue were really strong in this episode. Again, they were kind of bringing back a lot of the themes that we're starting to become a little bit more familiar with, which is really good because it just gives you that immediate sense of danger and, and it puts your mind in that place. I, th I, th I think the technical term for that is called cognitive association. I think. I could be completely wrong there. It's kind of like if someone cooks a particular meal, for example, it might have been something that your nan did for you when you were a kid or your mum did as you were growing up things like that your mind immediately goes back and associates with that particular kind of memory and this is what i think a lot of this music does that murray gold is so good at and his themes that he he will rewrite them and reorchestrate them slightly to kind of give them differences but at the fundamental core it brings you back in an emotional capacity back to that same state so you think back to Parting of the Ways and the music of the Daleks and that big, big build 
it immediately, the moment you hear that, you're thinking, holy <laughs> So, that is my review of Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. What are your thoughts? Drop the comments down below. But, of course, we need to do the scoring. Now, if you aren't aware, if you haven't seen any of my videos, then first of all, while you're watching this, go back and watch all the others. They're great. But what I do is I score every story out of 100. By giving 10 categories, a score out of 10. And so, let's do the scores for Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. And so, that means that this two-parter story, the season two finale, has scored 73 marks out of 100. Which means that it gets a B rating overall. Now, it is quite hard to tell whether this is a better season finale than the first season finale. But, luckily for you, and unluckily for me, that is what you guys have asked me to do as part of my 100 subscriber special. I put out a poll on my channel, and so I asked for a couple of different suggestions of a type of video that you guys would like to see, just as a bit of a thank you for helping me get to 100 subscribers. And you've asked me to rank the season finales. And so that is what I'm going to do. So keep an eye out on the channel over the next couple of weeks. Remember, subscribe and get that notification bell so you know when that video will go live. And I am also doing a monthly ranking at the start of every month, which I will do again. I'll do a little poll on the channel and you get to have your say. Because at the end of the day, I want to make content that you guys want to watch for you to continue on this journey with me. But until next time, my name's Kevin. I am a geek and you have been watching Kevin the Geek. Goodbye.